Hello everyone. Hey. Episode something something. Today we're gonna actually we're gonna recap <coughs> Janina powerlifting competition. Um, That's so fun. Because I think doing that uh, will allow us to explain how the system works in a practical way. Yeah. I like it. So first, let's get your numbers. That I mean, are I always way. like to talk about myself. Yeah, so. in a way, like, that's <laughs> never an issue, right? So, we can talk about this forever. Right, Come yeah, on. Let's make it like a two-hour-long podcast. <laughs> yes. And we talk about each feeling that you oh, have yeah. moving forward. That would feed the narcissism. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, nice. so first, let's get the numbers out of the way. So she got 140 kilo squat, uh, 315. That were actually only our opening attempt. We'll explain what happened after. <laughs> she got a 70 kilo bench, 155. And a 190 kilo, 425 deadlift. Yeah. So um, that puts Janina at a 400 kilo total, right? Yeah. Um, we we looked and actually 485. So let's say when she gets to 500 kilo total, 1100 pounds, that that should put her on the podium at the Worlds at 69 kilos. Yeah. So 100 kilos. Where are we going to find those 100 kilos? She's actually not that far um, because. Uh, well, first, let's recap the competition. Then I'll explain that we're going to shoot for the podium at Worlds within two years. So I'm going to explain what the plan is, depending on the kid, obviously. Yes. But it'll be two years of work. So how do we plan two years of work? Because, and that's something I wanted to use a competition to explain that, is that um, uh, we, we plan things really ahead. If you see how I train Janina, it's... Three months, six months, a year, two years. Most of my training really is planned. I have a six-month plan on anything. Like nothing is ever short-term in the way we train, unless we're picking yep. for a competition. But even that, I'm really not thinking about that competition. I'm thinking about the one after. Yeah. And that, you have to understand, is critical to progress. It's obviously part of the strong fit system, but not because it's something I came up with. It's just... You cannot do that. You cannot have success without it's critical thinking. You cannot have it without planning ahead and everything. I've been getting a lot of one-on-ones uh, lately, and uh, a lot of French people actually are, are coming our way. French I, peeps. You know, I, I should have paid a bit more attention in my French class in high school. Yeah, exactly, because we, we're actually guys. getting a lot of, uh, yeah, of the it's French. So cool. And I think it's really one cool. of the really. reasons, I think, is... And I think this is something we see... Um, throughout uh, CrossFit, even in the U.S., but I think it's going to be maybe a bit more in Europe because they're less versed usually in, in uh, strength and conditioning. In that sense, like Europeans do sports, so mm -hmm. they know Olympic sports, yes. but they don't have really a history of powerlifting. Of, they're very good at it. We have multiple world champions in Europe throughout powerlifting, but the overall culture in the U.S. has always been strength and conditioning because of college. They go to college and they have a four-year plan, just like an Olympic plan and stuff like that, that we don't necessarily see in in, uh, the, in Europe. No, so you, the we US, don't have also that we don't have the same like the scholarships scholarship systems system and, and, yeah. and it's just really different. Oh, I, that's actually, that's when when we first got to the US. I, I remember telling you I was so surprised about how people were so interested in strength and conditioning. Right. And, and to me, You're learning it was, about it. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the, that's I, a very I, I never thing. understood that. I mean, I, I never saw yeah. that a 40 or 50 year old still wanted to learn something yeah. new yeah. In, in strength and conditioning yeah. and especially to improve someone else. Like yeah. not for them, own, yeah, not yeah. even not yeah, just like, for them. For, yeah, yeah coach, it's like, yeah. oh, let me get better. Because in, in, I think in Europe, there's really that culture of like, okay, I'm going to get my degree and then I'm going to work and I'm 30 and that's like in, what I do. And then even, yeah. And, but you see where I, I, I think love the it's Americans starting for that. to create an issue. It's and really I think cool. that's what they're starting to see strong fit a little bit differently is that the whole like CrossFit, you just do CrossFit, yeah. like that's no plan, like no year plan in CrossFit, just, you know, random because it's easier to program. Let's be honest, you just put workout together. Maybe you have a four week cycle and you see it out there, right? Uh, that's not working. Like it, I think they just stuck now and they stuck because strength cannot be done like that. You cannot randomize strength. It, it's it's a long term plan. It takes a long time to get strong. Even as fast as you progress, there's always a way. And for example, yes. when you go in competition, I'm gonna stay at ninety five percent. I'm not gonna ninety six percent, but I'm not gonna give a hundred percent. Otherwise, the next competition is gonna be uh, probably too hard, and then the athlete is gonna have to back off. So, in order to understand what we do with strong fit, you have to understand intensity, 
and all the requirements to be able to train intensely all year long. And that's really what the main base, I would say, of the yeah. strong fit system is that is understanding and applying intensity. So it, it was, let's talk about your competition um, and how we got you there on everything. Yeah. Well, I think honestly, this is a 50% you effort and a 50% me effort. I was going 80 20, <laughs> but okay, whatever. <laughs> no, I mean, like, the day off? Oh, yeah, it's 80 20. It's 80 20. Like, oh. I just show up and I lift the weight, and that's as much as I do. Right, but so I mean, let's I mean of the total thing, I mean. But it's, it's definitely 80 20. I think of the total thing, it's definitely like I would not be here without you. No, but the, so, I would not. So people do understand any what a competition this. looks like. By the way, shout no, I mean, out to, I mean also like the. the I, I know, but we're gonna talk about that. But by the way, shout out to the the organization it was for the fantastic. IPF is Brazil. The nationals were. That it dude does a tremendously good Gabriel job. Gabriel is really cool. fantastic. Like, yeah, he's, it's awesome. Uh, just anyway. to just to explain. Um, they let me compete there, even though I'm a foreigner, I'm obviously right. not Brazilian. So she's uh, invited. Basically. I'm invited, yeah. and uh, my score is not for the official, like, to compete with the other girls, but my total counts because it's an IPF competition. So I can, for example, with my score now, I can qualify for the Dutch Nationals, which I would be able to get a prize or whatever. So but... her number got her third uh, yes. at Nationals in Brazil. Uh, and the two girls that were ahead of her both went to the Worlds. Yeah. So and, and they, so not officially, but for the yeah, they total forty five kilos, and so we know at five hundred uh, she's going to the worlds, obviously, but also uh, podium. So most likely, obviously, you never know. But just so people understand what the life of a coach is, when you get to those competitions, you have to time the warm up because, for example, in a weight class, there are ten people. So that means that if you calculate about forty five seconds per lift, right, you're gonna end up depending if it's a squat, the bench, or the deadlift, because the setup is not the same, but you calculate about six to eight minutes in between lifts. So you have to make sure you train like that too, because if you're used to lifting every two minutes, now you have to wait eight minutes. Mm -hmm. That fucks you up. So whenever we do the warm-up, we have to make sure we have six minutes at least in between each set that starts to get heavy, so that she can get to the last warm-up, six to seven minutes before an opener so that she gets there properly. So that means that I have to time each warm-up based on the number of person in that weight class. Yeah. Right. So, and of course, we all share uh, barbells. And, so it's a mess. Like yeah. from a coaching perspective, that's why I, I never compete when my athletes are competing because I'm, I'm so tired at the end of the day. Uh, plus, I have to fake socialize with everybody and say hi to everybody yeah. there and pretend I actually enjoy talking to people. <laughs> so it's really, really taxing. Yeah. Ve- I get very, very tired. Anyway. Yeah, it, it was, yeah, so Enough about me. Let's talk about you. Yes, like, exactly. Right. Like, <laughs> so, squat happens. We fucked up the, the well, warming up a little bit because... I told one of my athletes that was there to go warm up, and she decided to be on her phone instead. So we had to rush, not you, just another athlete that was No, okay, so just to give an idea, we had to make weight class. And because um, I, I ended up starting my period in the beginning of the week, so I gained a lot of weight, and I had to lose that water weight. Um, so I ended up like... Um, having to cut, like having to, like you will see on the template, I had to do basically cardio and everything, which was fine. But then the last day we cut out water completely. So we got the day before, the yeah. day before I made the weight less easily ended up. Right. But, but little organization, like, so they, the way starts at eight. So we show up at eight thirty. turns out she was called first. So therefore she had to wait after everybody to weigh yes. in now. That's the only thing where I wish they would have explained to me. Yeah. So, that means that she could not eat, she could not eat or drink till nine o'clock, and then we had to warm up, start at nine twenty. So she's still eating and everything. That's, so so we I was messed eating and, 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 and drinking and everything because, like, uh, we we had to. Anyway, that part is boring. No one wants to know. So we get to the squat. <laughs> I know you love to talk about yourself, but no, you can't be that like, boring. I, yeah, I was defending you. Say I'm on my phone. No, I was actually eating and drinking and getting right, ready. But no one cares. Okay. So we get to the squat. And we do our opener at 140. And she gets red lighted on the first squad. Yeah. But two red lights, one, one white light. One white light. Um, so the guy in the center red lighted all, her, all of her squads. Uh, I have the video. I don't get it. I don't. Like, let I, me just put it this way. I'm not bitching. Uh, this is the IPF. And with the squad, there's a lot of stuff like that that happens at the world, for example. But I got to tell you. When she squatted, she even paused slightly at the bottom and then went back up. I was like, all right, cool. Let's go 150 kilos, second, 335. Yeah, because I even walked away smiling because yeah. 
I was like, okay, I'm going to do my first lift so well yeah, exactly. that I don't want any doubt because I wanted to really, because we worked a lot on the squat, so I was really excited actually yeah, yeah. to do to squat. And it, I and I actually walked away smiling because I thought I was even shaking the guy hand like, thank you, thank you for this opportunity to the, everybody around. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm cool. I'm, I'm set. Huh? Wait, what? Uh, I, okay, I, I got to tell you, the rest shocked. of the day, I've seen squats that were way shorter than that. So, but I was also the only one who squatted a bit more like high bar, like more like an Olympic weightlifter, and, and the rest was really like powerlifting squats. So I think they were maybe judging so she me. She didn't on, have as much of a butt twink, which is maybe what the person was waiting I think, for. I think so, honestly. Uh, I, I anyway, think so. I think I, that was what the I don't issue know, was. Because, I, I don't know. I, personally, I thought the squat was plenty deep, but anyway, she gets red lighted, right? Two to one. So she goes for the second uh, one at 140. Nails it, but then because she got flustered on the first red light, does not wait for the command to rack, and gets red lighted again. This one justified like so because she didn't yes, listen to command. Yes, my fault. So that one is her fault. But and this that's, is, that's yeah. also where I, for example, like that was a sp very specific moment of a mistake I make generally. Is I get flustered and then I kind right. of like make mistakes that I don't need to be making. And now she spirals. So that that was really like I was like ooh like that's a mental. Right. So now you have to understand. She had two red lights. If she um, zeroes the next uh, squat, her competition is done. So she's one squat away from the whole weekend being gone. <laughs> so I was like, oh great. So I go <laughs> see her and I'm like, all right, stop this shit right now. Get yourself back. We didn't do all this for this. So. <laughs> Get yourself back on the control. I know she got flustered. But this is where the Q-1 training yes. came in. Where you learn to deal with stress, but you learn to manage when the head goes in the wrong place. Up or down doesn't matter. If she'd been down, I would have been like, snap out of it. But because she was up, I was like, shut, shut the fuck up. And, you know, mentally, yeah. tell the voice to shut the fuck up. Come back to normal, critical thinking, like, what did I do wrong? Let me fix it. Let me listen to comment. Snap out of it. You cannot start to go into that wheel of pain yeah. or where the head starts to go. That's what the Q-1 training is for. That's why we yeah. do it all the time because that's where it pays off. The Q-1, the problem is most of the time you don't know why you're doing it. Because yeah. after well, a I while, know why I do it because I know exactly, yeah. like, I have a lot of these... Uh, they're getting better, but I have a lot of these types of things where... Autism. Welcome yes, where I just know my... I know... But the, the problem is in those situations is that I don't feel it coming. It just happens. Yes, and, then and then I just... I'm lost. Slap and Slap in the face. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just... It goes I think away everybody from can relate that yes. to it. We just understand that with autism, it's just very, very high. So... But, bon. but that's where the q minus one is for because uh, you got to get yourself back under control. Fuck yeah. Because otherwise, the competition is over. Yes. So, <laughs> <don't want> <laughs> um, she won. By the way, now she has five, four minutes because I went to the. She has four to five minutes to get that under control. She gets her head right, nails the squat, two white lights, thank you. Squat is in, now we can move to the bench. Yeah. So, that's the Q minus one. Now the, we can keep on competing. So, that being said, our plan was to go 140, 150. Uh, 160. I am convinced she has a 365 uh, back squat. So that means that the 400 kilo in a good competition is already 420. Because remember, we're trying to get to 500, yeah. which is why I have a two-year plan, and you'll, you're going to see where it makes sense. So now we get to the bench, and we do 60, 65, 70 kilos. So 135, 145, 155. Bench. I like. So you'll notice I do 10 kilos jumps on the squat, 5 kilos on the on the bench press. 10 kilos. Uh, on the deadlift at those weights. Um, 60, 65, 70, everything goes well. I get all all white lights. Because yeah. after that, honestly, I snapped out of it. But I, and this was actually, <clears throat> I should have talked about this before this competition, is that when I was sprinting, I had the same kind of issue where I would start my qualifying rounds and you have three rounds in sprinting on one day. And the qualifying rounds, I'm so nervous. I'm like, I'm yeah. not nervous like, I get, um, I don't feel the anxiety. I'm more like paralyzed. Like I feel like I have no strength left. Yeah. And then I mess always up in the first round. And then yeah. on the finals, I'm, I'm not as nervous anymore. Yeah. For the deadlift, I'm not nearly as nervous as, uh, for, 
for, yeah, the, for, the, for, squad. The, for the squad. Anyway. So I needed to start sooner. But I needed to... Yeah. So we'll to, have to change the warm-up yeah, next time. She'll have to, to do her sprint drills. We're going to need to warm-up for the squad for 45 minutes because it'll be a warm-up as much uh, mental as physical. I need to honestly. wake up. So that is part of the why you want to go in, co in competition because this is where you learn those things. Yes. That how to warm-up properly for the big workouts. How to use Q-1. That's why competing is great. It, this, this is the only place when you'll learn those yes. things. Right? It, and it's, it's really the same thing. It's like once I get going, usually I'm fine. It's like right. the transition into things where I struggle. So, but we get to the squat, uh, to, pardon, to, to the bench. And last time she did 60, uh, she did 60 and 65 kilo. 65 was very hard on the last competition. And she fell 67 and a half. She got pinned. This time she goes 60, 65, 70 very easily. Uh, we have not worked on the bench, honestly. Like her technique is not a good bench technique for women. Uh, it's all tricep because that's what we've been working on. Honestly, the last year I told her, like, don't worry about the bench. And I don't know that we're going to worry about it even this year. Just get the, the upper back and the tricep stronger. That's it. That being said, uh, we're not even working on technique yet. Because honestly, the arch toward the shoulders and everything, I want to make sure she develops a good base of upper back and triceps yeah. first. And, and um, I have, I'm very far behind in my upper body compared to my lower body because I never, I couldn't do a pull up three years ago or yeah. a push up. So yeah, she couldn't do a push up three years ago. Yes. How crazy is that? Yeah. So, uh, I mean the, the legs, I had legs because of sprinting, but I had no upper body strength. So no, that's, so we have, we had to, to build a big base and all honestly, that Honestly, um, two years of work with technique, we're talking 90 kilos. Honestly, I have no doubt. Yeah, so hopefully. That, that's, <laughs> you know, like just... Um, it would be nice, but uh, it's So she's work. already, at, if you see good competition, she gets 160. So two years of work, we will put her squat at uh, 180 kilos, so 400 pounds. She'll have a 400 pound squat, I have no doubt. The bench, we're going to get it to 90 because she's at 70, all triceps, now narrow grip. Off you go. So I know we'll get to 90. So now we're ready. 180, 90, we had 270. Okay. So we already gained the 40 kilos on the 400, right? You know, two years from now anyway. Yeah. 30 kilo because, uh, no, sorry, 60 kilo total because now we go from a 140 squat to a 180 squat. That's my plan anyway. And we're going to go from 70 to 90 in two years, right? So now we gained 60 kilos. We had 460 already. So now we get to the deadlift and she goes 170, 180, 190. And that was very easy. Was, was I was honestly she had 200 kilos at least the... and so did I give it to her no did I know she had 200 yes uh, did I know she had 190 uh, no doubt honestly uh, but I'm not going to give her 200 yet because like for example when we train at home the max weight she's ever listed at, at home was 170 her opener I only let her train to her opener's weight on the deadlift which means she does 170 for 4 I know she's ready to go for the 190. So right now, I'll give her 200 when she does 180 for three to four reps, right? When she can stabilize at 180 for three reps, no problem, then I'll give her the 200. And she's always going to be most likely five at 95% of her max. I don't want her to go 100% unless we add the worlds because, and even then, because otherwise you're going to pay for it the year after. You don't want to max those out early in your career. Honestly, it'll just hold you back. Everything is a plan forward, right? So, honestly, she had 200. So, if you take the 20 kilo on the squat she should have had and the 10 kilo we could have added to the deadlift, she would be at 430, right? So, we have 70 kilos to gain, 20 kilo on the squat, 10 kilo on, uh, sorry, 20 kilo on the, on the, uh, on the bench, right? So, yeah. that puts you at a for 500 kilo, that puts her at a 220 to 230 kilo uh, deadlift, which we, 220 within two years. Yeah, I can see that. The, the deadlift is something that uh, it's really my thing. Yeah. <laughs> I just really like it. I'm, I'm 220 put out 490. I, I, yeah. I have a lot of confidence. Yeah. Like, and that was also like when we got to the to the to the deadlift bar, and I lifted the like. That, that's the cool thing about having such a good coach is that I just have to show up. And just lift the fucking weight. That's all I did. Yeah. So the 170, when it went up like that, I was like, I'm ready to fight. Like, yeah. I don't don't care what you put on that bar. I'm going to lift it. Like, I yeah. just had so much confidence. But that's because we That's trained. the way we train it. 
Honestly. We have the yes, and but also, that's why you train like that. That's why I say one set intensity all yes. the time. See, because you you need to you need to learn to fuck shit up. You need to learn to get to the bar. And now the intensity, uh, a lot of it is mental. Where I need you to get to the bar with murderous intent. You can do that if you do three sets of five all the time. That's not true. All you're learning to do is to pace your strength. And you can do that with volume. You, you cannot do it with strength. Yeah. You, you have to bring it. Especially on a deadlift, you have to bring it. Like building your confidence to our lifting is extremely important. And honestly, uh, a lot of it is just good programming, finding the right exercises. And after that, one set, max intensity, go ahead. But you see, what's funny is like the last competition, she did 180. This one, she did 190. Then we're going to go 200 on the next one. This is one set of four reps on the deadlift at max weight every two weeks. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's... How crazy is that when you look at it like that? One set of four reps every two weeks. Yeah. And... That's it? Two sets a month on the deadlift. Yes, that's crazy. That's all is needed to get stronger as long as you do the yes. proper uh, structure work. So that's the S pyramid. This is really where we spend time on. So, for example, how are we going to make the squat go up? She's not confident under the weight. So, That's and box squats, and there's some squats. Why? Because box squats is going to teach her to push her hips forward, which she does very well. But I'm going to be able to load the bar more. So, we're going to build the upper back and her feeling under the weight. We're going to do box squats above parallel, just like um, Jody Marco taught me. Exploding, and then we're going to do Anderson squat just to put weight on her back. For the depth, what we're going to do is we're going to play with speed squats, at the proper depth, where she'll have to touch a touch the proper depth and then explode up, but at a much lighter weight. It'll be like nothing past 50%. Yeah. You know what I mean, because I don't want to grind the hips. What I want right now is a lot of weight on her back to for her to develop that confidence to take it down and up and also to have, obviously, the lats, the upper back, the, the back structure to, to squat heavy. She's very upright. On her squat, which is great because she can uh, rely on the legs, but that means we need a fuck ton of upper back strength, right? When you put the bar lower and everything, you can play with, you know, stomach forward like you're nine months pregnant. You can play with a mid-back more. If you're staying very upright, you know, brace this way. Instead of this way, you just brace like that. Um, it's great, but man, is your uh, low trap going to have to be strong because... That's what's holding the weight together. That, Whereas, that's where I feel yeah. so... That's where I if feel... If you put the bar much lower and forward, that's you can play weak. with your mid-back, which is what I was doing. So then you get away with a good morning type squat, which is a completely different squat than what she's doing. I don't need her to good morning the squat. That's not her squat. That's my squat, right? So Because I want Brazilian legs <laughs> as well. It's equally important. Yeah, there. No, it's just my squat. Like, that's yeah. how I've always... No, plus it's important to have legs It's here. very important. Uh, like, otherwise, I... if you don't have legs and ass here, it's a difficult life. No, but it's in general it's a difficult life. Like, listen, powerlifting is not paying my rent. <laughs> you are. <laughs> so being hot is... Like, yeah, Fuck yeah! yeah exactly. <laughs> we are, like, my marriage is more important than my there powerlifting competition. So. There you go. No. It pays a lot better, too. So, uh, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a better it's career. So, exactly. so get them legs. Um, where no, uh, was I, I? Yeah. Now it sounds like a, like some type of... No. Whatever. I, I, the, you, you get my joke. Uh, look, I made joke about prison sex when it comes to deadlift. Yeah, I true. think they'll get that joke yes, as well. Um, yes. So... Um, I thought this was a, this competition was great because you really, uh, you, I think that way you can understand why we do the template we do uh, the way we do it. You'll see a lot of tricep work, you'll see a lot of upper back, you'll see a lot of strongmen. So why would we do so much strongmen for a powerlifting competition? Because it gets your structure up. And once you have that structure up, you just use it toward a specific sport. But the point of the template, the point of the strong fit system... It's, it's to make you a better athlete. So in this case, a better strength athlete. And then you can play at being a better uh, powerlifter or strongman or whatever. After that, it's just more technical work, more getting used to that specific lift and, and stuff like that. But the, if you see the overall of the strong fit system, is to give you a very strong base that can be applied toward any strength sport. It yeah. would be, I would train... Personally, if she came down to even Olympic weightlifting, I would do the same. And I would not let my athletes snatch heavy uh, every every day. Honestly, PRs would be once in a blue moon when everything aligns. You would go at 90, 90 something percent all the time, but we would spend 
a lot of time building your structure, a bit like the Chinese system, honestly. And I know because I've trained some uh, Olympic weightlifter and we had very good results doing pretty much what I'm doing with Janina. Like, I, like that over-specialization to our Olympic weightlifting in CrossFit, for example, where you have to snatch or clean and jerk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like at some point, like once you've learned the movement, of course you you have to work. But remember, you're not an Olympic, an Olympian either. Like how much? At some point, you have to get stronger. Yes, of course, in Olympic weightlifting, it's such a technical sport. You need to, to be good at it. But honestly, I think people spend too much time on technique at the expense of getting stronger. Mm-hmm. Like, yes. uh, like honestly, like you're, you're, you know, like the overhead squat and the stuff, like that's great. Once you learn to catch a snatch after that, it's a matter of how strong are you. Ah. Like, improve your back sweat. Improve and and your, I think uh, actually, like, for example, like the, the thing about deadlifting every two weeks, like every two weeks, you, you're able to be f- fresh-minded, you're very much more focused, like, you don't get obsessive over the weights necessarily because you're never right. going too heavy anyway. And, 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 then, and you want to yeah, deadlift, and you want which to is deadlift, so important. And, yes, and, I think one of the biggest things I would say to everybody is, like, if you should... Honestly, if you show up to the gym and it's like, oh my God, like, take a day off, come back tomorrow, kill the weight. Now, obviously, it's not an excuse to be lazy, but at some point, you wanting to fuck shit up, at least for strength. I'm sure it's a bit different when it comes to cardio, but for strength, if you don't want to fuck shit up, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. Maybe you should, but what you need is a day off or a week off, come back with the right intensity. Everything is about intensity, mental and physical. If you don't have any in the gym, you burn out, this has to be addressed. And um, I think also like why I like that it's called strong fit, like the fit part, for example, carried me so far into the, because at no point in the competition I was tired, I could recover in between my lifts. I, the next day, okay, my nervous system was shut, but I was not extremely sore. I was, I could cut weight. The base was strong. I could bike. Uh, an hour yeah. in the, an hour the day before without it affecting my body whatsoever because I was yeah. well conditioned because you always stress to me the importance of conditioning 100%. outside of my strength 100%. training like you, you always have to be told a me strength like, athlete you always told me you yeah. have to be able to like you have to still run you have to still do all the cross I think people specialize too. my my warm up yeah. was the sprint yeah. drills by the way that's right too many technique think... too much Olympic weightlifting honestly you need become a strength athlete this will carry over better to most of what you do. Yeah, and yeah, like my warm up was the sprint drills, which was fantastic. Yeah. And like it was put on, so basically, this was it, an application it, of the strong fit system through and through, honestly. But as you can tell, we we really plan ahead. Like you really this, plan ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but it's very important because most crossfitters, like I think, six weeks is as far as they look. Yeah, come and be. and it has it's to be six be. months. It has to be two years. Like it's just certain things take time, but that's just the way things are. Well, anyway, I, we have thirty minutes. Yeah. We will see on the next podcast and we, we yes. shall keep... Because I want to talk about the shoulder health and then the, the strong fit system. Because I got some ideas about the openers I want to tell you about and some stuff that I saw. And because I want to do seminars again toward the... Because I want now, I want to teach a strong fit system and uh, push it out there. And then there's a few things I want to talk about on the next podcast. You have a lot of thing, cool things about the show yeah. to talk about. Like yeah. that's actually uh, yeah. some very anyway, interesting stuff. That will be on the next podcast. Thank you, guys. Congratulations to Janina again. See you guys next week. Thank you. Congratulations to you, actually.